The concept of beauty has changed a lot over the years. Today, it has the power to hurt people, and in some cases, even take their lives. Our society is ruled by mass media, which is always showing the perfect faces and the perfect bodies, which can sometimes be created. All kinds of people are affected by the stereotypes of perfection because it's everywhere. These stereotypes are changing the way that we perceive ourselves. There are two kinds of plastic surgery, cosmetic and reconstructive. Reconstructive surgery, according to B a p a r a s dot com. I won't going to try and pronounce that. So the reconstructive surgery is all about repairing people and restoring function. It is performed to repair and reshape the bodily structures affected by birth defects, developmental abnormalities, trauma, injuries, infections, tumors, and disease. Meaning that although reconstructive surgery may have some cosmetic benefits, that's not its intended purpose. Cosmetic Plastic surgery, however, is one of the most popular surgeries undertaken at this very moment in time. This has been further strengthened by the presence of medical tourism, which can provide cosmetic treatment in a foreign country for a fraction of its localized price. Meaning that body fashion is more attainable for the average person to achieve. One of the primary reasons that people choose to get cosmetic surgery is to look like their favorite celebrity in terms of physical appearance or beauty. People have been known to spend huge amounts of money and to undertake painful efforts just to achieve the desired look in order to make themselves have similar attributes to their role model. Although this may seem like a mere fascination and appreciation for their celebrities, there can also be a dark side to the continuous use of cosmetic procedures. The reality is, is that plastic surgery is associated with a wide range of issues, including but not limited to emotional psychological and on the physical front. If mass media didn't feed into and even in some cases create people's insecurities there would not be a need to fix the perceived problem. However this essay is not to discuss the merits or the issues with surgery. Surgery can help people who have suffered from accidents or you know help aid health issues. It can also help people who have helped their insecurities and their self-esteem but conversely it can and enslave people who are looking for perfection. Honestly, it all depends on your taste and your pockets. But in the case of Laurie Hill, in the quest for knowledge and a pure fascination with cosmetic surgery in that industry, she has become a surgery enthusiast with a hypercritical assessment of natural beauty. In Laurie's world, you're not ugly, you're just poor. And somehow that makes us all feel better about ourselves. But is building up the self-esteem of your audience really worth destroying the credibility and emotional well-being of the subjects at the center of her personal unsubstantiated case studies? I want to discuss all of this and more in today's video essay, Laurie Hill, Invasive Surgery. What is 
it is your girl Paige. I just wanted to come in before we start today's video properly and just say a massive thank you to every single effing one of you guys. We finally reached over 100, no, 200,000 subscribers and we're now at like 201,000 subscribers and I just want to say thank you guys so much for all of your absolutely amazing support recently. Um, the work I'm putting in, the work I'm pouring in, hopefully you guys can feel that because it takes me a long time, especially with kids. It takes me a long time, but I'm, I'm doing it now and it's all coming back. Thank you as well to the Patreons and to the Twitch family. I just want to say thank you, that's all. And I'll let you get back to it. But first, without, we can't do nothing without today's sponsor. So introducing today's sponsor for today's video. Today's video is proudly sponsored by Fetch Rewards. Fetch Rewards is a super easy free app where you can earn rewards on literally anything it is that you choose to buy. You can scan any receipt or e-receipt and you can earn points regardless of where it is that you choose to shop. You can then redeem those points for hundreds of different awards including Amazon as well as things like Visa gift cards. So basically all you do is open up the app and then you can scan your receipt and then as soon as you scan your receipt you can redeem it for points you can literally spend it anywhere now the good thing about this app is that you don't even have to use like normal paper receipts you can also use your e-receipts so anything that gets sent directly into your email inbox you don't have to worry about where the receipt is from or what's on the receipt you just scan your receipts and get points it's literally that simple so once you scan your receipt and redeem your points you can literally use your points immediately directly from your mobile. Now the best thing about Fetch Rewards for me personally is that you can use your points towards gift cards. Now that sounds like an amazing option to me as a mother because we all know that Christmas creeps up on you thick and fast sis. So being able to redeem my points towards gift cards that I can actually use as gifts to other people honestly is going to make my life a billion times easier come Christmas. And the best part about it is that I don't have to spend any extra money than I would usually spend on my day-to-day -day shopping. So if you would like to start scanning your receipts and then receiving rewards, please make your way over to the link in my description box down below. Please make sure that you click that link because it greatly helps the channel when you do. And when you get there, if you use code PAGE, that's P-A-I-G-E, you can get 3,000 additional points when you scan your first receipt. This is a limited time offer just for my viewers, so please make sure that you go over to the link in the description box and start treating yourself the way that you deserve to be treated, sis. Thank you once again to Fetch Rewards for introducing me to your awesome app as well as sponsoring today's video. And without further ado, let's get straight into the rest of the video. <laughs> Cosmetics procedures were first performed in the 1600s to fix disfigurements. The ancient Egyptians were pioneers in medicine and originated treatments for various disfigurements. They learned how to successfully set broken bones and bandage them with willow leaves in order to treat the inflammation. They would use aloe, which we all know is a medicinal plant. Aloe vera is known for its anti-inflammatory, skin protection, antibacterial, antiviral, antiseptic, as well as wound healing properties so then they would use aloe for like skin diseases and burns and they also made an array of surgical tools out of copper which are surprisingly close to the kind of tools or med medical tools it is that we use today in 800 BCE in India doctors were practicing surgery techniques as part of Ayurveda I think that's how you pronounce it. And that meant knowledge of life and longevity. This medical system was built off of knowledge that they attained by dissecting dead bodies. An Ayurvedic physician called Shushruta is known as the father of plastic surgery. His resource, the Shushruta Samhita, I'm probably butchering all of these names, describes over 300 surgical techniques, including reconstructions of the ears as well as the nose, which was very important in those times. Because in ancient India your nose was seen as a symbol of dignity and respect so sometimes amputation of the nose was a way to punish criminals so that they would forever be branded I mean <laughs> talk about a criminal record. Women would also have their noses cut off if they were accused of adultery, regardless of whether they actually did that or not. And if they were somehow found not guilty, they would still live with that disfigurement for the rest of their lives, which was a moment 
British doctor Joseph Carpew went over and spent 20 years in India to learn plastic surgery methods. In 1815, he performed his very first rhinoplasty on a patient in England. That was to a British officer who had lost his nose due to the effects of syphilis and girl, so basically in the 1800s, people in Britain were just riddled with syphilis and all that doctors could do was prescribe them the oh so toxic mercury because Brits hadn't even discovered penicillin yet. I mean, they didn't even discover penicillin until 1920. So basically what happens is when syphilis gets really, really bad, it can like literally leave gaping holes and welts in your face and in your body. Some of these were like literally exposing skull and bones. So so basically, Joseph Carpew just wanted to make Brits look like themselves again after their bodies and their faces had been eaten by syphilis. British doctors even ended up using a lot of the Indian skin grafting techniques several years later in the World Wars, as many patients were literally having their faces blast off. They would use the skin from the arm and place it over the patient's face so that the living skin would bond to the open wound. However, the success rate of this was iffy. In 1962, Timmy Jean Lindsay is the first person to have a breast augmentation using silicone. And from the 1970s to the 1980s, cosmetic surgery was becoming more of a social norm. And since then, millions of procedures have been done around the world. And that's the point is that plastic surgery or cosmetic surgery in of itself isn't bad. Whether it's for cosmetics reasons or for health reasons, regardless, the benefits to one self-esteem is immeasurable and we all deserve to feel good right to be happy in our own skin comfortable and valid in our bodies however there is a youtube channel that claims to consider the beauty standards placed upon the world as well as the emotional well-being of the general public but not the emotional well-being of the individuals at the center of their discussion like we discussed previously cosmetic or reconstructive surgery can help aid various different ailments for instance I myself have had weight loss surgery in order to prep for my IVF and whilst there are some clear cosmetic benefits that was not its intended purpose. I wanted to lose weight to start my IVF journey because my doctors would not consider me at the size that I was. I ended up actually conceiving naturally but that's besides the point. So imagine a person who could possibly be dealing with a deep and emotional issue having to divulge their personal distress for the benefit of others. Had I have not disclosed my my weight loss surgery would you have suggested that I do? Is my silence harmful? Couple that with some clear inaccuracies, speculation and outright conspiracy theories and we have Laurie Hill, a YouTuber who thinks that you deserve to know the composition of somebody else's anatomy. <laughs> Laurie Hill is a 44 year old YouTuber. Her self-titled YouTube channel is a commentary channel predominantly focused on discussions around celebrity plastic surgeries. Laurie was born October 4th, 1977 in the USSR. However, her family did eventually move over to the USA. She pursued acting in her twenties, but then left in order to become a dental hygienist. She then married her boss and ended up having her son. Laurie Hill's channel has gained over 400,000 subscribers since 2019 when she made her first first video titled Fibroblast Under Eye Treatment Video. Her most popular video on her channel, which was from September 2021, is titled The Reign of the Slim Thick Influencer is Over Kim Kardashian's Butt Reduction, which has gained over 1.8 million views. Laurie had a pretty different start on YouTube. She started off by showing her own cosmetic procedures and advising people on how to best navigate the world of cosmetic surgery. It's clear that Laurie has always been an advocate for cosmetic surgery, but only if the person considering the surgery was informed, had the right motivations to do whatever surgery it was that they desired, knew of the side effects that could take place, and as well as being of sound mind and having mental capacity. Between the years of 2019 to 2020, Laurie was actually using herself as the case study. Besides one video where she speaks about celebrity eye lifts, where she speculates on a bunch of different people's eye lifts. However, on the 23rd of January, 2020, Laurie 
Harry made a video titled Bella Hadid Plastic Surgery 2020. This is the first video of Laurie's to become viral, generating over a million views. This was when Laurie essentially recognized that she had struck gold and continued making videos speculating on what cosmetic surgeries it was that various influencers, people of interest, celebrities had undertaken. But it was always public figures at the center of these case study discussions. And one day about, I don't know, about six months in, I think it was around six months in, it might have been, no, it might have been almost a year in, I was talking to one of my other friends and we were talking about Bella Hadid and I remember her saying, Bella is so beautiful. I mean, how can somebody be that beautiful? And I remember just offhand saying, you know, she's very beautiful and she's had really good plastic surgery. And my friend literally had no idea that Bella had ever had any plastic surgery. And I thought she was kidding. Yeah. And my friend is like really smart. <laughs> and I was just like, I just started naming off procedures. I figured everybody knew and everybody could look at someone and see it. And so I remember how like, surprised she was. So I said, do you think a video about Bella Hadid's plastic surgery, possible procedures that she's had would do well? And she's like, yeah, I'd watch that video. So I made a video, my first ever celebrity analysis video. Laurie is somewhat of a polarizing character here on YouTube, just due to the kind of content it is that she creates. Many people love her content and find it extremely informative. The general consensus of Laurie's fans who enjoy her content is that she's just trying to shed a light on the world of cosmetic surgery and that industry and how it plays a role in Hollywood. In Laurie's own words, she states, my goal for this channel is to inform you of the best plus surgery procedures with the best results as well as caution you about the plastic surgery and the cosmetic procedures that should be avoided. In videos however she has said various different things. When I do celebrity videos it's never to shame or expose that celebrity rather it's to give you out there hope and to diminish any insecurities you may have when you view these perfect celebrities and thinking they were born that way. My goal is to show you that beauty is attainable. It's also to lift the veil of secrecy that surrounds plastic surgery because everybody deserves to feel beautiful. My videos are meant to help people who compare themselves to celebrities and other public figures to show them that that person wasn't born perfect. However, in recent years, it seems as if Laurie's content has deviated from where it began and her channel has become a tentative look into a guesswork based opinion on the cosmetic surgery and the surgical procedures that celebrities may have had. Laurie states, although I'm not a doctor, I have an extremely well-informed opinion garnered from my own plastic surgeries coupled with a talent for discerning what facial features and combinations are objectively beautiful. That's such a strange sense as I would argue the beauty is subjective. It's based on the experience of pleasure that we have when we look at certain things. It's also carved by our environment and our culture. In some cultures, being plus sized is more desirable. For instance, in my home country of Jamaica, 65% of the women in the country are obese or clinically classed as obese. A 1993 study conducted in rural Jamaica showed that they associated thinness with sadness, but heaviness with happiness, kindness, as well as social harmony. There is also currently an emerging pill market where, you know, young people and young adults are trying to take pills in order to gain weight. However, in Western culture, that's not the pinnacle of beauty. The issue is that what Laurie is discussing is an unconfirmed superstitious analysis based on unproven evidence. And Laurie knows this and has admitted to getting various pieces of information wrong and has at no point attempted to correct herself or to provide clarity. So far, there hasn't been a Laurie Hill retraction. You know, in the past, I would say like, for example, I would say this person got this procedure. Well, and then my like informant will say, yeah, they did get a procedure, but they didn't get that exact one. They got this other one and they went to this place to get it. And I, so I'll get the procedure. I'll get the thing that changed. I'll get the body part that changed correct, 
but the method of changing it may be slightly different than what I said. Laurie isn't a cosmetic surgeon or even qualified within the field. She's a dental with a BA or an associate's degree. However, Laurie states on her website that she has a unique access into the world of plastic surgeons through a private network of friends and associates who share wisdom and knowledge with me. I question why these industry professionals who she professes to converse in with over her videos, why don't they come forward and put their names to what she is alleging or speculating? Is it because it's unethical and without a clinical diagnosis as well as somebody's medical history that would be extremely difficult to assess and that without those there would be no way to confirm that any of it is true. The problem is is that Laurie in the quest for creating the most interesting content here on YouTube speculates on surgery with an overcritical eye. I would argue that that is the trap that a lot of content creators find themselves in when faced with a algorithmic hit. Sometimes we as content creators feel the need Need to either replicate or outdo the last video. All of us are slaves to the algorithm and Laurie knows all too well that once you hit an algorithmic stride, it is very important that you do not take your foot off the pedal. I truly don't believe that this is done out of malicious intent, just circumstantial to our positions here as YouTubers and commentators. So let's take for instance her assessment on what procedures it is that that Kendall Jenner has had. On the 11th of February, 2020, Laurie said this. In my opinion, Kendall Jenner had a nose job sometime between 2012 and 2013. Endoscopic brow lift hides the incisions in the hairline. They're truly undetectable. This brow lift gave Kendall Jenner way more upper lid space. Fillers tend to give a more voluminous look, whereas cheek implants give a harder, more model-esque angle. In addition to Kendall Jenner possibly having cheek implants, I also believe that she had buckle fat removal to accentuate her cheek angles even more and give her that upswept V look to her face. Laurie Hill's assessment is essentially that she had a brow lift, a nose job, buckle fat removal, cheek implants, as well as lip filler, all accumulating to the total of $36,000. Now, if we compare that to a video made on the 11th of October in 2020 by TikTok plastic surgeon, Anthony Young, he made a video where he assessed that Kendall Jenner most likely had Botox, a nose job, and some lip filler. And he actually suggests in his professional opinion that he doesn't believe that Kendall Jenner has had any kind of a brow lift and that any facial structural changes are likely to have happened over time and with age. Now they look fantastic, but I do believe she has had some injections of filler into her lips. And I do believe it's possible she may have had some injections of Botox into the forehead. If you inject Botox in the forehead into a V shape, a V shape in the forehead, you can actually cause the eyebrows to arch more. Now in some people, this can create a weird and funny look. You can get what we call a Cruella de Vil look if you overdo it in somebody who already has an arched brow. But in Kendall's case, her brow actually naturally looks like it's a bit lower. It's a little bit more horizontal. So by injecting Botox in a V shape, you can actually take somebody who has a horizontal brow and give it a bit of an arch. And it can actually look really good on people like it appears to on Kendall. She's got some Botox in the forehead to give her that nice arched brow and to give her that shape. I don't think she's had a brow lift. Some people may think so, but I would disagree with that. I do think her nose looks like it's been elegantly refined. And that, that I think is a great way to describe it. Kudos to her plastic surgeon, uh, whoever potentially did that nose job did a fantastic job with it. Laurie decided to revisit Kendall Jenner's surgery on the 21st of March, 2021. In a video titled, Kendall Jenner Plastic Surgery Update and Body Analysis. I was excited when I first saw this because my assumption was that obviously she may have watched um, Anthony Young's video and possibly changed her stance. But no, it was an update where she essentially doubled down. And even when as far as to say that she thinks that Kendall Jenner may have had breast augmentation, however, because her breasts aren't showing any signs of a normal breast augmentation, that the Kardashians may have this secret kind of filler that nobody knows about. At this point, it's just baseless accusations and outright conspiracy theories. Let's talk about Kendall Jenner's face. 
Now I really want to emphasize that this look that Kendall has to her eyes and her eyebrows was not accomplished through a thread lift. Regardless of any advertisements or claims that you see out there, Kendall's eyebrows started out pretty low and to raise them to this height, you have to do more than a thread lift. This is the result of an endoscopic brow lift. Kendall is now thinner than ever. Although her chest looks larger, I can't say it's because of augmentation or just natural growth. Her chest does not appear to have the typical look of chest implants. Throughout the years, Kendall's chest has gone up and down in size, causing people to speculate that she's had augmentation. Wouldn't put it past the car Jenners to have been offered some kind of new filler that no one's heard of for the chest area. But until we know of that filler, I'm going to say that she's natural. So on one hand, you have Laurie Hill's unsupported assumptions. And on the other hand, you have a real surgeon's professional medical based analysis. Whose judgment are you more likely to listen to? The individual who is trained within the field, who has studied several years to get the certification needed to become a surgeon with hands on experience performing several surgeries every single day or an unqualified person who feels as if they have the ability to just tell when somebody has had surgery intuitively and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like but what about her network of individuals who help her with her video at this very moment that's very much trust me bro like I need more evidence than that and if a professional's not willing to put their name to it then I genuinely think that's indication that you're probably doing something that's unethical. Next thing I struggle with is some of the flat out inaccuracies. In an assessment of Blackpink singer slash rapper Lisa she said that she analyzed pictures of her when she was 16 or 17 just so she could safely say that she would have been out of puberty at that point. Lisa did start very young. We do have photos of her her from when she was 14, but the photos I used to analyze were once she was 16 and 17 years old. So she was safely out of puberty by that point. That's nice, but that's a general assumption. You can't know when somebody has finished puberty. For instance, my mother didn't start growing breasts until she was 16 years old. And in fact, she's 60 years old at this very moment with no sign of menopause. Her analysis of Adele is that she had liposuction to sculpt her body after all already acknowledging that Adele has lost over 100 pounds. At my biggest, I have a huge ass. And at my smallest, I have absolutely no ass at all. There is literally no way for us to know the contours that Adele's smaller figure has because we've never seen it prior to this moment. Now regarding the shape or the silhouette of Adele's body, I think that it's likely that Adele had some liposuction to her legs to sculpt the shape of her legs. Looking at Adele's nipped in waist, I think there was likely some liposuction done there as well to give her a slimmer contour. It's the cynicism. It can't just be that Adele has lost a hundred pounds. It has to be she's lost a hundred pounds and she's had a little secret work done too. The same goes for Kendall Jenner who already has a low body fat level. She has lost even more weight. However, Laurie stated that her inner thigh gap was achieved through liposuction whilst in tandem acknowledging Kendall's weight loss, stating that people's body shape doesn't change like that. I think that Kendall lost a lot of the weight, but she also had liposuction, in my opinion, to carve out that perfect figure, as weight loss only really results in a smaller body, not in completely differently shaped thighs, flanks, and tummy. The fact is, is that Kendall Jenner has always had a thigh gap. It literally took me just five minutes on a Google search to assess that she's just built that way and that it's more pronounced purely because she's a lot thinner now. And it's sad that we even have to do this because other people's bodies are not our opinion to have. It's none of our business. In her video about teenage plastic surgeries, she states that she has a lot of empathy for children who are growing up with certain features like the family knows and states that she would encourage to get that feature fixed as she has empathy for people who are being bullied for their physical features. If you're being bullied for a facial feature that you, for example, can't grow into because it's so large, 
um, maybe you inherited the family nose or your ears stick out and you're being bullied for it, then I think it's definitely worthwhile to get that feature fixed. That's just my opinion. It doesn't mean that it's what you should do, but I have a lot of empathy for people who are being bullied because of a facial feature. And this is somewhat contradictory to me, especially seems Bella Hadid, a person of which Laurie has spent a lot of time speculating on all of the various different surgeries that she believes that she's had done. She actually admitted recently to having her nose done at 14 years old, which Laurie references in this video. And in this interview, Bella states that she wishes she had waited to have more time to grow into her more ethnic nose. And speaking of noses... In a video discussing Little Kim's speculated cosmetic procedures, Laurie reads out an article where Little Kim details her abusive relationship and the necessity for her reconstructive surgery. In this video, she states that we should all have empathy on a human level for these individuals who choose to undergo surgery. But are we more empathetic because Lil' Kim divulged her personal trauma to us? Because there seems to be a distinct lack of empathy when it comes to individuals who choose to have a more private personal life. So is this empathy transactional? Once the person gives the general public what they really want? In 2005, Little Kim went on a radio talk show and explained that she had had her nose broken during a physically abusive confrontation with an ex-boyfriend. She revealed that she had to fix her nose not once, but multiple times. Every time she would go back to that abusive person, he would hit her again. Now, after reading this, I really think it was the abusive relationship that caused Little Kim to have all of these insecurities. And maybe the only way she felt secure with herself and in control, even temporarily, was by getting plastic surgery. This is where understanding someone on a human level really comes in. Your nose repeatedly broken and fixed can lead to other plastic surgeries because once one feature is changed, then she may have felt like she had to change other features as well. And this caused me to have so much empathy for what little Kim probably went through and the insecurity that she felt being in this type of relationship. Maybe all of these events led to her making bad surgical decisions. So before we blame someone for getting bad plastic surgery, you need to consider what state of mind they were in prior to making those surgical decisions. We should have empathy for her. And was it empathetic to put her picture in a thumbnail for a video titled Five Celebrities That Ruined Their Faces? I imagine as a domestic violence survivor, that seeing the world talk about your ruined face would be destroyed. Dressing. So my question is, do celebrities deserve privacy? As a society, I believe that we're all too quick to judge and have taken it upon ourselves to demand that celebrities come clean about whatever surgical procedures it is that they may have had. In fact, there's a whole culture around it. One of the biggest Instagrams surrounding this culture is called Celeb Face. It's essentially an Instagram page where followers can partake in a digital game of spot the difference by calling out Photoshop in before and after sequences. And then there's the other one, Cosmetic Derm. That's another Instagram page that used to make content specifically detailing what kinds of cosmetic surgery it was that they speculated that various different public figures may have had. However, now in 2022, they've since moved from using celebrities as case studies and now use open and willing participants showing their before and after of their own surgical and non-surgical surgical procedures, proving that there is an abundance of resources to show the differences. So Laurie's opening statement of her channel, my goal is for this channel to inform you of the best plastic surgery procedures with the best results, as well as to caution you about the plastic surgeries and cosmetic procedures that should be avoided, all could be done with consenting contributors. In 2015, Kylie Jenner had lip filler and we, the public, demanded that she come clean. The internet had been obsessed with her lips for 
really is. And it was kind of obvious that Kylie Jenner's lips had not inflated due to puberty, but still the public backed her into the corner, demanding to hear it from the horse's mouth itself until she had no choice but to confess. Having been urged to do so by her sister, Chloe, who alluded to the fact that her sister may have undergone a certain procedure. Kylie decided to plump her lips. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think if you've done something though, it is right to cop up to it. If you avoid a question, you're gonna look like a liar. I'm not ever gonna deny or confirm anything because it's too much. They're all here to trip us up, so it's good you're just doing your thing. In a clip of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, Kylie finally admitted it. I have temporary lip fillers. It's just an insecurity of mine and it's what I wanted to do. I'm just not ready to talk to reporters about my lips yet because everyone always picks us apart. I want to admit to the lips, but people are so quick to judge me on everything. So I might have tiptoed around the truth, but I didn't lie. However, what I will say is I thought that my recollection of this instance was completely warped because I remember and I don't know like if I'm losing my mind or something, but I remember a lot of people saying that the reason that they wanted Kylie Jenner, who at that point was 17 years old, to come forward and speak about her lip filler was because she was selling these Kylie Jenner lip kits. And basically it was false advertisement because people would think that they would end up having lips like Kylie. That is complete and utter bullshit. According to the timeline, it was actually seven months after the admission of her lip filler had aired on Keeping Up With The Kardashians. So there was no quote unquote obligation for her to divulge that information about herself because she hadn't even come out with the lip kits yet. So she wasn't lying about the effects of her lip kit. If somebody has endured rhinoplasty, chances are they were deeply insecure about their nose in the first place. And now that they might be feeling more like themselves, why should they be shamed into coming clean? Iggy Azalea explained to Seventeen Magazine, plastic surgery is an emotional journey. It's no easy feat to live with your flaws and accept yourself. And it's no easy feat to change yourself. Either way you look at it, it's a tough journey. There are things about myself that I didn't like, so I changed them through surgery. And there are other things that I dislike that I've learned to accept. In a 1998 interview for a Dutch TV show, a then 17 year old Britney Spears was questioned about her alleged breast augmentation. There's one subject we didn't discuss. Mm -hmm. What was that? Everyone's talking about it. Why? Well, your breasts. <laughs> You seem to get furious when a talk show host comes up with this <laughs> subject. Okay, let's, in general, what do you think about breast implants, just in general? Well, I think if that's what you want to do and it, that would make you happy, then I see nothing wrong with it, but I've not, I haven't done that. There was even an article in Us Magazine surrounding that speculation that reads, Britney Spears 21 reportedly has had breast implants. In 1999, the then 17-year-old singer seemed to just bust out overnight. New York's Daily News reported that Spears had implants. Her reps at the time didn't deny the claim. An expert says it's very probable that she had an augmentation, but Beverly Hills plastic surgeon Randall D. Harworth tells us the pop star has attributed her fuller bust to a major growth spurt and later said, like, I'm really going to get breast implants at 17. The speculation didn't end there and the pessimism that the media was shown was that when, even when there was no way to prove that a breast augmentation had taken place, they were willing to print unsubstantiated claims and outright conspiracy theories. Sound familiar? Rolling Stone wrote, as a teen, the singer's mother, Lynn, allowed her to get breast implants. But after going under the knife, she regretted the implants, particularly because her chest was still growing, a friend says. When her natural breast became larger, she had the implants removed. But Spears kept the surgery a secret, the friend adds. When other girls did their boobs, they admitted it and moved on. But Britney was brought up to lie about herself. Britney Spears, as we know, was in a conservative 
conservatorship and has notoriously never had any kind of privacy, whether it's by the people who controlled her life or by the paparazzi in the media. However, this has actually happened again in August of 2021, when people speculated a second time that she has had a breast augmentation. The public seemed to have this fascination with knowing everything that is going on anatomically with people's bodies, especially if they're a celebrity. Some people in this world are just built that way. And should Britney Spears' non-surgical perfection make others feel insecure? Does that validate your insecurities? Or is it the simple fact that people would hold these insecurities regardless? And that it's really not up to public figures to help other people feel better about themselves? But am I responsible for them? The point I'm trying to make here is that nobody is expecting you not to have eyes, especially if something is physical because it may be hard not to take a look or to take notice. However, I feel as if this form of speculative content, whether it's an IG page, a blog post, a newspaper article, a YouTube video, is nothing more than gossip. And whilst we all enjoy a little bit of gossip now and then, as soon as somebody hears gossip, it usually doesn't take them long to tell the first person it is that they see. That's exactly how rumors start. Most of the time, it doesn't matter whether the rumor is true or false, as long as the person telling it makes it sound extremely believable or convincing. According to Nicholas DeFonzo, a professor at Rochester Institute of Technology, he states that rumors are human sense making. DeFonzo also states that there there are three different motivations as to why a person will start a rumor. The first one is where the person who started the rumor is just trying to make sense of the situation. So in this circumstance, how is this person so perfect? Let's try and make sense of that. The second is that the person who is telling the rumor may be trying to build a better relationship with the person it is that they're telling the rumor to. It's clear that Laurie's audience growth is very important to her. And it's clear in her comment section, the very tight knit community it is that she has created. The last one is where the motivation of the person telling the rumor is trying to build themselves or a certain group up whilst tearing another group down. Now, whilst we can discern that Laurie's content is most definitely pro-plastic surgery, it's clear that Laurie and possibly even her audience still stigmatize celebrities or public figures who choose to be silent on their private private lives as well as their anatomy. Basically, Defonso is saying that there is always a reason behind why somebody is spreading a rumor. So to answer my own question, do celebrities deserve privacy? Yes, yes they do. But more importantly, should they have to or should they feel compelled to address these rumors? No. But one celebrity finally did. And boy, did they create a storm. And that person is Doja Cat. Female celebrities are constantly scrutinized and surveilled in gossip culture. Their faces and their bodies are constantly pored over, searching for evidence of aging, surgical enhancement, as well as cosmetic modification. The gossip industry has made hyper scrutinization of the female celebrity its major focus. And cosmetic surgery, when related to celebrity culture, has been routinely represented as either amazing, gorgeous, just glamorous, yes girl, or monstrous, disgusting, ew, look at you. In the gossip industry, speculation around celebrity surgery shows a breadth and depth of ongoing source material in which surgical enhancement, transformation, and tightening of the celebrity have come somewhat of an obsession. Doja Cat has become one of many women who have become the focus of this kind of obsession. In an Instagram live video on February 20th, 2022, Doja Cat, who's 26 years old, addressed a video that Laurie Hill had made titled, Doja Cat looks different than before here's why. They claimed that Doja Cat had had numerous different surgeries that amounted to the total of $340,000. This deleted Laurie Hill video was tremendously hard to find, but we found it. Here are a few clips from that video. Doja may have had done was an upper bluff 
peripheroplasty. Notice how the heavy look of her upper eyelids is gone. She now has more makeup space to her upper eyelids, but I believe she did have a rhinoplasty. They have also been filled in cosmetically. Look at her eye length. It has increased. Her eyes are now longer horizontally in the after photo. This is another change that the temporal brow lift portion of a ponytail facelift gives, slightly hollowed to filled in, which is also the result of the cheek lift portion of the ponytail facelift. The cheek flesh is raised upwards, filling in the under eye area. Now all of these changes that I just mentioned, I believe are part of one procedure that is called the ponytail facelift or an endoscopic facelift. But I can speak in very general terms here. Doja has a naturally ample chest, which looks to have been lifted around 2018. Later, when Doja lost a lot of weight, it looks like there was another lift with breast reduction done as well. Once you have any type of lift, if you lose or gain weight, usually the lift will need to be redone. That suggests some surgical assistance as well in the form of some spot liposuction. To begin with, Laurie basically states that she was going to be including Doja in a series called Nearly Perfect with individuals with either minor surgeries that have taken place or none at all. But with the analysis of her co-researcher, and I would love to know what their credentials are too, they realized that Doja had had several subtle cosmetic procedures. Maybe I can put her in my almost natural celebrity series. But after starting the analysis for Doja to be in my almost natural video, I noticed that there were actually quite a few more procedures than I thought Doja had had. But to make absolutely sure that I was correct, I had my co-researcher Kiki work together with me on this project. After Kiki analyzed Doja, we both agree that Doja was one of the hardest analysis we've ever done because her plastic surgery was some of the best and most subtle plastic surgery we've ever seen that led to some of the biggest changes we've ever seen. She admits in a video that she was unable to find comparative front-facing photographs, but asserts that she has looked at hundreds of pictures. Both Kiki and I scoured the internet for good front-facing photos of Doja, and we had almost no luck but always keep in mind that i review hundreds of photos of the celebrity and it's only a few of those photos that go on to make it into a video to really illustrate the points i'm making but if there was no comparative photos to go on then the ethical thing to do would be not to assess anything or to assert your assumption because it's unsubstantiated after detailing all of the various different surgeries it is that laurie is speculating that Doja may have had, it ends up being a whopping 340,000 USD. How much it costs to look like Doja Cat? Upper blepharoplasty, 10,000. Rhinoplasty, 20,000. Ponytail facelift, which includes a brow lift, eye corner lift, mid facelift, along with jawline sharpening, 200,000. Filler to her upper and lower lips, for four years, 20,000. Breast lift, 20,000. Breast reduction, 30,000. Liposuction to multiple areas, 30,000. Cosmetic dentistry, six veneers, 12,000. Total cost, $342,000. Joja Cat was a complete shock to me. I can't overstate enough how much I and my co-researcher thought that she was natural or very close to natural. Even after analyzing so many celebrities, I still tend to believe celebrities at first when they say that they've never had plastic surgery. I do think that my naivete in this area does stop me from overanalyzing celebrities' plastic surgeries, but I shudder to think what would have happened had I not taken a closer look at Doja Cat's transformation. Nothing, absolutely nothing would have happened. The world would have kept spinning, everybody would have had their lunch, 
and everybody would have went home. Nothing would have happened. And just put her out as being natural or almost natural. This really showed me how important it is to take very close looks at celebrities. Doja did actually get wind of this video and retaliated on an Instagram Live. Here's a few clips from that live. Lori Hill talking about people's bodies, talking about people's surgery. Put this bitch made a plastic surgery video on Megan the Stallion. Shut the f up, bro. At that rate, Megan the Stallion is home grown. This bitch has nerve. And I'll tell you something. You want to sit there in your chair talking about how this girl and that girl and this girl got this and that done? Bitch, look at you. You got work to do right now. And I won't say more. I'm pissed off and a lot of people would say, you're mad because it's the truth. You're mad because she clocked you on something. But f that. I'm mad because there's lies about me. That's what the f I'm mad about. So bitch, you really want to go? Let's go. Bitch, I'll tell you one thing. I built my career off of my body and the way that my body looks and making my fans feel confident in the way that their body looks. And the moment that I start losing weight, Bitches like you. Jack Skellington bitches like you want to start talking about the way that I look. I'm a rhinoplasty. Her example is a picture of me from 2014. In 2014, I wasn't shit. In 2014, I had little to no money. I was depending on boyfriends to buy me food. I was eating eggs and oatmeal. Alcohol, weed, all that shit can f with your body. Depression, things like that can really f with your body, it can f with your physical form. I was eating marinara and bread every day. That was the beginning of my, my depression, I remember. And my body was very different. I was, I was puffy, I was sad, I was f up in 2014. Me f eating well and going to rehearsal and my body's changing I'm 26 not 19 anymore you know it's changing and I accept it and I love it as time goes on I love it because I'm learning how to take care of myself I didn't, I didn't know how to take care of myself but then when somebody comes and just tears that down just says you know just completely discredits everything that you learned in the last seven or eight years of your life. Completely shuts it down, tears it down, a complete stranger like that. And a stranger who has, who has power, really. Who has a force. It can really, it can really with you, it can make you really upset. It's hard to just be like, like, whatever, you know? That's a big, that's a big part. But motherfuckers are like, bro. Now, Doja retorted that these were unsubstantiated claims and mostly that she was hurt by them. Many people were upset because Doja, in her anger, stated that Laurie was botched, a bag of bones, and that she needed to get some help. And people did not like this and labeled Doja as aggressive, as is the case whenever a black woman or a woman of color speak their truth. What Doja was trying to say in the midst of her emotions was, you have some issues of your own, you should probably focus on those instead of speculating about others. Now, granted, her delivery wasn't as eloquent because again, she was hurt and in some parts of the live, literally on the verge of tears. So what did the general public do to this woman of color? Just dismiss her voice altogether as if she has no right to be upset about the way people talk about her. Now, Doja Cat is a lot smaller than she used to be. And being somewhat of a Doja fan, full disclosure, I'm not like a huge fan, but I'm a fan. Doja was extremely broke in the years it is that Laurie is alleging that she had a $20,000 rhinoplasty. For what she is alleging is a minor surgical transformation. We gotta remember that this is the SoundCloud rapper who is making music in their bedroom. She was signed to the most horrendous 150 
$150,000 music deal with RCA, which is Dr. Luke's people, ew. Now that sounds like a large amount of money, but when you kind of put it into it, they have to pay staff, studio time, music videos, paid collabs, tours, marketing, and then she has to find money out of that for herself to live. So in essence, she was very broke and we're supposed to believe the girl who could barely lay down her own synthetic wigs, I love you sis, but you can't lay them down yourself, had a nose job to edit such a fine and minute detail. I used to be really scared to like be seen without my makeup and I thought my eyebrows were too thin and I thought, you know, I didn't have enough eyelashes and it's cool to be natural and it feels good to be natural. We're all unique. We all have really unique, you know, things about ourselves and nobody can change that and that's what makes us beautiful, that, that which makes us different. We're also supposed to believe that she spent $20,000 out of that $150,000 budget for five years. Now, I'm not here to prove to you that Doja hasn't had any surgery because to be honest, I simply don't care and neither should you. I do, however, think that this speaks more to the fact that with help, with your health, with access to nutritional information, access to healthier food options, access to a personal trainer, we all have the ability to make lifestyle changes and that in some cases, health, is really only for those who can afford it as well as having the open and available time to execute it but they don't want to have that conversation right now. But I have the query as to why there is no non-surgical praise. And whilst I understand the quest to remove the stigma around plastic surgery, I wonder why other people's perfections make others feel insecure. I feel as if we have moved past a place in society where there is such a stigma towards plastic surgery. There are so many friends of mine with tummy tucks, breast augmentations, BBLs, nose jobs, lip filler, breast lifts, weight loss surgery, surgery, mommy makeovers, that I feel like we're now all under the assumption that if there is something that you don't like about yourself or you want to change, you can surgically get it or inject it. And shouldn't we, the general public, be proud of their appearance? Happy for them in the way that they look? Instead, we're shaming them for indulging in certain surgical procedures. And we now ask speculations online for the world to see before further shaming them for doing it and denying it, which is exactly what happened. So many people commented, Doja Cat's upset because it's true. Many comments of this nature were even liked by Laurie herself. And even when when asked if her stance had changed upon seeing Doja Cat's Instagram live video, Laurie again doubled down. Laurie also went on to state that she took the video down as it's never her intention to hurt anyone. But then she also stated that she would re-upload the Doja video, but with some of Doja's comments. And there is a reason why Laurie hasn't actually done this, because this was two months ago. There's a reason why Laurie hasn't actually done this, and this is because of a lawsuit. Two months ago, Tasha Kay was sued by Cardi B for over $11 million because of unsubstantiated claims. Now, if you can't prove your claims, you are left defenseless in court. And her stance can't be, well, I analyzed some photos as a surgery enthusiast. And as a public figure using the statement, in my opinion, doesn't stop somebody suing you to the full extent of the law. Especially if you re-upload that video with new commentary and lawyers are able to prove malicious intent. So it's very smart of Lauren not to have gone through with this. The drama between Doja and Laurie did eventually die down and people moved on. But did they? Did Doja, Bella, Adele, Kendall, Lisa, Megan? Essentially, we are all guilty of accusing someone people that we don't know, that we have no personal connection to, of lying to us. Can you imagine walking up to a barmaid at the pub or a cashier at the bank or sitting next to a friend of a friend that you just met at brunch and demanding that they confirm whether they had gone under the knife? Whether it's for vanity or self-confidence. People go under the knife or needle for numerous different reasons. So why do we have such an unjustified entitlement? 
when it comes to demanding that celebrities admit their procedures? Would we even believe them if no was the legitimate answer? In a world where retouching is second nature and is inescapable, in magazines, on billboards, and on social media every single day, we already know that people don't genuinely look like that flawless retouched version of themselves at all times. But are we any better off for knowing that they don't? No. Conversely, when people in the public pass off their surgically enhanced faces and bodies as natural, there are some serious implications when it comes to body image, particularly to those who suffer from a body dysmorphic disorder. But in the words of Britney Spears, are they really responsible for them? But am I responsible for them? Transparency can only be considered healthy when an individual's perception of beauty is being warped. We live in a world where the general consensus is that work is being done. Sometimes. That being said, it's up to the individual what they do with their body, regardless of any article, any video, any anything. And it's up to that person, and only that person, to disclose their body. The media shows us what society thinks that we should be, and that cosmetic surgery is the answer. People are constantly second guessing their appearance and studying every angle. And social media, as well as the fashion industry, is a constant reminder of how imperfect everybody really is, which can cause for many people to develop disorders early in life. But that's just a projected image of the world we live in and the values we place as a society on beauty standards in the world, not the individuals living in it. Because if a celebrity changed themselves to get the latest procedure, to conform to idealized beauty, chances are they're facing the exact same societal pressures that you are. The lack of individuality within society is directly correlated by the impossible beauty standards dictated to us by the media. So why are we so hard on them? Why do we demand the truth for an accusation that we made? And again, I don't think that the content that Laurie is making is with malicious intent. She herself is also a product of society and mass media, but it's more so that it's done without thought. When speaking of her own surgeries, Laurie stated that people started treating her differently after she had her nose job and that it hurt her. And the worst part about it was the way that people treated me and the assumptions that they made. When they would talk to me, even random people who barely knew me, sometimes they would bring up my nose in a conversation that wasn't even about my nose. Oh, so, um, yeah, you know, I was thinking about getting my nose done. Just the way they brought up my nose really let me know that it was such an obvious defect in my face. And I was pursuing acting at the time, and I remember that I did a play. This casting agent who had been at this play um, referred me to an acting agent that was in town. And the acting agent not only refused to represent me, but also felt the need to tell this casting director that she's great, she's talented, but her nose, like, ooh, her nose, what happened there? I was devastated yet again. One of the worst things about the whole experience is the assumption that people placed on me that I must be really into my looks because of how obvious my nose job looked. And nothing could be further from the truth. Not only had I just wanted to look normal with my nose, I wasn't trying to look beautiful and I wasn't trying to do surgeries that would beautify me. I just wanted to fit in. I wanted my nose to look normal. I didn't even want it to look perfect. So why can't we show the same grace for others? Why are celebrities who choose not to disclose the epicenter of these educational discussions about surgery? By building up the self-esteem of the audience, we are in turn breaking down one person. Or is the celebrity at the center of discussion just collateral damage? Because long after the audience have moved on, the emotional scars are left on the patients that you cut with your words deeper than any scalpel can reach. Their self-esteem broken with the speculations you made. And for those who were innocent, 
their noses were cut off and they were forever branded. Nobody would ever believe them. So remember, as we dissect celebrities, we leave dismembered bodies that only they themselves can suture together. And I pray that as the anesthesia wears off, that society will come to their senses and realize that we just witnessed invasive surgery. Thank you so much. This is something that has been literally on my chest for like two months, if I'm perfectly honest. When the whole saga went down with Laurie Hill, I had a lot of feelings then. And I knew that like my thought process wasn't going to be the same as everybody else's. I knew that it was going to be polarizing. And I feel like a lot of this time has just been me mustering up the courage to actually just say what it is that I feel. Um, obviously, I know that there's going to be a lot of Laurie fans who aren't going to be too happy about me talking about their Lord and saying, Jesus Christ but at the same time um I feel as if we can all just be adults and you know have a genuine discussion some good old discourse in the comment section without being rude mean or dismissive again this video for me wasn't necessarily about talking about you know whether cosmetic surgery is good or bad personally I love cosmetic surgery I mean besides my weight loss surgery I've had nothing done but as far as I'm concerned I'm, I'm not adverse to it a, a mommy makeover is definitely in my future I see it I'm going to manifest it so I don't feel like anyone should be embarrassed but I also don't think it's anyone's business like in that I feel like that's just the it's nobody's business and especially watching in real time as an individual a celebrity and whether you like what it is that they said or not or thought they were rude or dismissed or whatever it was clear that they were hurt and regardless that's the fact of the situation is that somebody else's body was discussed and they were hurt about that and I think about all of the other people who may have been hurt by Laurie's content and not necessarily because she's saying anything mean rude or aggressive but just because of what that content is I feel like a lot of us forget that celebrities and people of interest are human beings too and I said that in 2022 that my vibe was going to be humanizing every single person hence why I don't think that Laurie Hill's a bad person I just think that she's a little bit misguided that's just my two cents but with that being said I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video uh, please let me know what you think in the comment section down below I'd like to say a massive thank you to all of my patreons all of my twitch family all of my youtube gang 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 all my members i really appreciate you uh yeah once again thank you guys so much for getting me to 200,000 subscribers it is amazing and i will see you in the next video which by the way if you're following me you know this next story is going to be explosive and most likely will get me cancelled in some way or another but i'm ready for it bitch so with that being said i hope you guys have an amazing day or evening you beautiful amazing badass bitches it's been Paige. bye